What is up, my tricksters? It's your friendly neighborhood Yu-Gi-Oh! Superhero back again with a deck profile video. Uh, if you guys are new to this channel, I need you guys to do a handful of things for me. I need you to like the video so this can get to as many people as possible. I need you guys to also subscribe if you're new. And on top of that, if you guys want to support this channel, there are links below. You can check out my Teespring where you can get, you know, like my characters for my skits like Frank or, uh, you know, my logo and other things. Some of my art is also available on there. So go, go check out my spring store, get you some merch. It's really fun, really cool. And I'm going to keep making new art so to throw out there. Uh, also, you can give me suggestions for that in the comments below. On top of all of that, if you're also new, I want to remind you guys that I do things a little different with deck profiles. I like to show you guys some replay footage before we get to that deck profile. So without further ado, let's go check out that replay footage and then we'll do the deck profile.
And there you have it, guys. That was the Shark Control deck in action. So let's go ahead and go over the deck profile. Uh, before we go into that, though, I just really quick want to let you guys know this is based off of what I actually own in the deck. So that's why it might look a little funny to you guys. So because I'm kind of a master of making do with what I have, that is why it looks a little funny. So let's kind of go over it, and then I'll explain. All right, so first of all, we got the Triple Buzzsaw Shark. This guy is the uh, bread and butter of this deck. And th th because this guy is literally a one-card make and negate and, you know, throw a badass monster out there. So that is that. Yeah, this guy is the, just the king. should have called him King Shark. <laughs> anyway, guys, then you got the Beautiful Princess. There's only one in this deck because I only own one, uh, unfortunately. So, and I, the last I looked at it, it was, like, going for, like, five bucks. And I'm like, I'm not paying that for a rare. Eat, eat my shorts. That's right. <laughs> We're going to go full Bart Simpson on this one. All right. Then we got the lifeless, uh, or excuse me, lifeless leaf fish. Yeah, that's what it's called. Uh, <laughs> this card is basically the Armageddon Knight for fish monsters. Uh, basically, we play this guy. We send a fish. Most of the time, you're sending the right hand shark because you're going to use it as a, or uh, you're going to send Buzzsaw or Silent Angler because it's going to combo with White Mirror. Um, uh, it also has this really cool like, Gusto Emerald esque effect where you can spin back three fish monsters. Uh, by banishing that and then you get to draw a card uh, that doesn't come up too much but it does come up then we got the right hand shark which i'm gonna play this even if i get a hold of the the new sharks that are out there they're level five which i i haven't had a chance to get yet and uh but yeah i think i'm gonna still play this card because i really like the whole can't be destroyed battle thing a lot of players forget that that's a thing and there is a combo with a monster in the extra deck that that does come up still so yeah we're definitely gonna keep that as a as an available move then we have the Lantern Shark, which I really like this card. It's basically free special summon uh, from the hand. It's a water. Uh, I believe it does trap you into Xyz, though, so uh, keep that in mind, if you, especially if you're going to be playing like Instant Fusion or, in, like in my case, or if you have access to Ready Fusion, keep that in mind if you're going to play Lantern Shark. I also play the Ice Knight. This guy is kind of like is kind of like the Lantern Shark, except it's not a special summon. It is a free normal summon of a water monster. Uh, the only... Uh, drawback is with the ice knight is that um it traps you into water monsters so the xe's monsters in your extra deck that are not water you won't have access to them uh and that does kind of suck but it has the same problem with like silent Sentinels here unfortunately because you know konami can't give us everything <laughs> ice knight also has this really cool thing where if you have multiple aqua type monsters in the field uh, it gains 400 attack points for each one. Uh, I have had games where this guy, <laughs> this measly level 4, was like 3,000 points for like no reason. So how funny is that? Um, anyway, then we got our Silent Anger Angler, which is very, is very much a very important combo piece to this deck because this card basically combos with white mirror uh there's this really cool like combo where like if you haven't used it yet you can like bring it back you could send it off with the leaf fish send it to the grave bring it back with white mirror and then uh then the white mirror searches you another copy that you get to special summon again later so it's like haha it was free <laughs> i like that it's a really cool combo i enjoy that then there's the silent sea nettles uh this card is also very much similar to this and has a digusto emerald-esque effect very much similar to the leaf fish however uh you don't get to draw a card and uh most of the time you're only using it to bring back the kriegans that are in your uh if they've gone to the graveyard so you can continue to play play the game uh then we got our synthana the tiny spirit this card is just a free special summon of a water monster while you don't control any effect monsters so basically it's the first monster you want to special summon uh when your turn starts so you throw this guy out there. Um, that's all there is to it. The 2,000 defense points doesn't come up too often, but, you know. Uh, then we got our, our Instant Fusion, and uh, because I only have Instant Fusion, I don't own a Ready Fusion at all. Uh, I'm only, I chose to play the Mud Dragon as my Instant Fusion target instead of the Fish, because I like the ability to protect my water monsters from being targeted. So that's what this guy does. Uh, it, that effect doesn't come up too much, but it does come up sometimes, especially if I want to, like, hedge my bets that my buzzsaw shark is going to go through uh depending on what kind of hand i draw so yeah so we went with this guy card because it just kind of seems like it's all that you it's all that in a bag of chips for this one and then we got a uh, white mirror and this card's on like a monster reborn and a rota for this deck uh which i really like the monster reborn aspect of this is that it brings back a, a fish monster which would be like silent anger or buzzsaw shark and then it'll 
give us another copy from the deck of that card, which comes in handy so often. Like I said, there's a really cool com combo with Silent Angler where you send the Silent Angler or you summon it off a of Buzzsaw Shark or you send it off of the Leaf Fish. You bring it back with the White Mirror, then you get another copy and you get more extension. I love that. That's awesome. I'm so glad this card came to two, Pot of Desires, because finally we get to put it back in the Shark deck. There was a minute there where we only had it at one, and it was like so inconsistent that you were never going to draw it. With this, it's the perfect number of consistency, and you, most of the time you don't care what you lose because your your goal is to just get to extenders or get some more uh, you know defensive cards. So. Uh, most of the time you don't care. The only thing you got to worry about is if you like banish all your buzzsaw sharks, you know, which it doesn't happen too often, but it does happen. So that does suck. Then we got our foolish burial. This is for to send, uh, basically mostly just send the right hand. It also will can send the silent angler or the leaf fish or the sea nettle. Uh, you kind of have a few options. Uh, if you already have sent off the card, like the right hand, uh, which is the one I typically do because the right hand is, can be kind of like uh, Synthana from the graveyard. It can bring about self back if you don't have any monsters. Uh, so that's kind of a cool little trick. It also baits negate too, by the way, when you do that. <laughs> Monster Reborn, just because extension, get, get us to keep playing, make our rank fours. Called by because screw Ash Blossom. I hate that card. I 100% hate Ash Blossom. Uh, that card, uh, it just makes me mad every time I see it. I, I play it too. I just say, yeah, I hate it. I'd rather, I'd ra I would gladly give up my ability to play Ash Blossom if it means nobody else can either. Straight up. <laughs> All right, then we got Forbidden Chalice. Uh, this card is a uh, poor man's Forbidden Droplets, but it, it's, it works well enough. Then we got Impermanence. This card is definitely better than Effect Veiler, especially for this deck. Um, basically, what we're trying to do is, we, we, the reason why we're playing both in this deck mostly is because we need that kind of negation to uh, to keep playing the game. Well, there's a lot of decks that play things like Lockout, like Fluanderies, which I'm sure you guys noticed in the replay footage. Thanks to having both these cards in the main deck, I, I think I was one of the reasons why I was able to, to pummel that deck into oblivion a lot. Uh, then we got Dimensional Barrier. This card is in main deck in here for like the Branded's, the Sword Souls, and all these, and the Brave, or not, is it Brave? You know, a lot of the Brave Synchro decks, you know what I mean? Like, I've been seeing a bunch of that roaming around, so this just kind of seems like a really decent card to have in there. Um main deck also it makes for an easy card to side out if, if you're up against decks that are not uh typically playing anything from the extra deck or if it's a link based deck then you just take this out and you can throw something in the side that's more advantageous then we got our goes and match and this card is king with the kragan you get these guys out it's very similar to the zombie world rivalry combo which i really like this because it's like ah now you're trapped into water monsters all i play are water monsters so i don't really care um, and that's really fun. It also, uh, tur since the Kriegan turns everything on the field into a water monster, even if I have a non-water monster on the field, it's like a, what, with the Kriegan, like a Tornado Dragon or my Vesmanado, uh, these cards become water while the Kriegan's on the field, so I don't have to kill anything with the Gozen Match, and that's, that is hilarious. So, I really like that. Um, the, uh, you know, just locking the opponent out. Of being able to so I can get to keep playing the game even though I'm playing a slower deck so it's very much a shark control deck with this one because we're going very much back row heavy uh, and less on the front row and obviously we don't have as many uh, access to hand traps uh, for this particular build uh, then we got now we're gonna go into we got a Zeus because every Xyz deck needs to get have access to Zeus uh, Vespinato here is a alternative uh, in case Zeus isn't quite advantageous or if I want to go for a different play um, because, like, there are going to be times where I'm not, like, trapped into water monsters, where I can turn a Bahamut Shark that I have already used to get a Toad out and turn it into this so I can attack for more damage. Uh, it does come up, so... And then, of course, like I said, uh, you could also use Vespinato here to get back a Chump Block, basically, uh, if it's necessary, or set up for the next turn. It does happen. Then we got the Valiant Shark here, uh, Shark Lancer. This big, think of this guy as a bigger... Uh, uh, Stealth Kriegan, uh, but this guy also has the ability to uh, take Xyz material from other Xyz monsters, so he doesn't have to give up his own, so that's kind of a fun little neat trick. It doesn't come up too often, but it's cool that you can do that. Um, he also just destroys, water, or doesn't just destroy, he'll destroy any monster uh, regardless of 
attribute and all that stuff but he does target and that's kind of a hindrance the really cool thing is if you have another monster that dies he puts a spell on the top of your deck which is a really big advantage to playing him uh, because we have a lot of powerful spells in this deck which is why I like doing it uh, to get him out you'll have to have buzzsaw and lantern shark specifically you'll have to have those two it's the only way we do it and let until we get more the other uh, new level five sharks uh, that become level four uh, until we get those guys uh, until I have access to those uh, you, this card's only gonna see play through those two those those two sharks specifically then we got our our Bahamut shark uh, I have more than one now but I've never needed more than one and considering I only have one toad it's kind of felt uh, it's always kind of felt like well one and one seems like the right ratio if I only have one toad so yeah then we got our spider shark spider shark is just a beat stick basically the whole role of this card is that you can lower the attack of a monster of the all the opponent's monsters by a thousand which if that doesn't come up it's but he's a water monster that can become a beat stick and that's kind of why we need him because uh we don't have too many of those then we got the uh crooked cook the, i i would honestly rather this guy was Bazguska, but uh, the crooked cook is uh really has this really cool niche combo with the right hand shark where it's like oh unaffected by card effects and can't die in battle so it's kaiju or bust for most opponents and if they don't have it they don't have it so and there are times where the crooked cook combo has allowed me to stall and win my deck out i don't really like winning that way but as a last resort i'm okay with it uh tornado dragon because screw those back row bitch decks i said what i said even though i think this counts as a back row bitch deck i you can call me a hypocrite in the comments if you want i don't care <laughs> then we got our silent honor arc uh i i feel like every water deck should play this one just because it's kind of like oh it's like the old it's like the the oldest water badass water exceeds monster in the game so i i don't know i just feel like it's got to be there I like it. I like uh, using it to uh, absorb an opponent's monster as Xyz material and then turning it into like a Vespinato or a Zeus. I find that kind of funny. And then we got the just mm, the thing that makes this deck go. The Stealth Kriegen. This monster is the best monster in this whole damn extra deck. I said it. Stealth Kriegen not only pops a card, but does burn damage also turns everything into a water monster and then when it dies it gives you two of these guys and then when these guys die they give you this guy back from the graveyard it's awesome and if these guys are on the field at the same time guess what now everything's water and that's you know it's just like a machine gun of popping <laughs> we're just taking out the whole field the whole field then we got abyss dweller here which turns off all the graveyard stuff tells the shadals the brandeds the the uh, burning abysses uh, the phantom knights of the of the world uh no you will not be doing that this turn sorry not sorry uh which i like also it gives all of my water monsters a boost there has been a few games where i threw out abyss dweller and it turns these guys into a legitimate beat sticks and then we're just taking the game from there and i love it also the cool thing is if you get abyss dweller out there with the kriegan and any other and any of our non water exceeds monsters well guess what now they're water and they get the boost from the abyss dweller too which i find hilarious it's like oh look now i have this almost 3,000 attack point vespinato because an abyss dweller and a kriegan are on the field at the same time then we got our totally awesome and totally awesome is like the is the is the big time negate i'm a little sad that when splite comes out that uh the splite is probably gonna get this card banned i'm a little bit mad about that because you know konami is, never seems to ban the problem but that's a conversation for another video <laughs> um now we're going to talk about the sideboard there actually is only like seven cards in this sideboard that i consistently have used the rest are just kind of there um we got our artifact lancia this card is kind of screw you to everything that banishes i pre as you guys can saw saw in the replay footage i had to, i played a lot of philanderies so and uh this card just came up and just eh, nope sorry your turn's over uh then we got white howling which is just great for any kind of spell based deck like uh, sky striker which i love flipping this on them because they get i is so heated i have been called so many slurs on it oh bro <laughs> because i flipped this card or a luck sacker and all that stuff you know it's hilarious um and then we got a red reboot which i love because it turns off the entire play of the altar guys players and i hate that deck with a p burning passion and it's just like no sorry uh we're not doing that today and that's just yeah 
Um, tornado, twist, twin twisters has come up a little bit. Uh, change of heart and mind control are kind of interchangeable. If you're up against a uh, another deck that has level four monsters in it, which a lot of them do, uh, it's just really fun to take one of their monsters and then turn it into one of these guys. So that's just kind of fun there. And then of course, Packer Tops is you know free special summon, uh, pop something, and you know get rid of a back row or a problematic card or punch something if necessary. Uh, can be a two for one. Uh, so while it's a, and even though it's not a water monster, it, that, that can come up. So I figured to hell with it, I'll have it in the side as well. Uh, I don't have anything other, I haven't figured out what I want to finish this sideboard out with yet, but that's, but that's for another time. I'll figure it out later. I just wanted to guys kind of show you this really fun, really cool, really effective control water deck that just seems to really kick ass. Well, when Edo Pro is not giving me weird hands like Triple Buzzsaw Shark and like, you know, Double Chalice or something weird like that. Uh, you know, when it's not giving me the weird hands, the were you know, the Edo Pro hands. You guys know what I'm talking about. It does really well. Anyway, guys, that's all I have for you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, I found this very educational and found an alternative way uh, to play the, the Shark deck. It really gives you guys a... Uh, a way to think outside the box because obviously not every player has access to every card in the game and can play them a most effective build so this way uh, i hopefully get to show you an alternative way and give you ideas on how you can play maybe your favorite deck in an alternative route if you don't have everything anyway guys i'm bitch thousand ygo i am your friendly neighborhood Yu-Gi-Oh superhero and i will catch you in the next one peace